Hi folks, I'm Ethan with Two Guys to Ride. Welcome to our Car Tech How-To video on the 2021 Honda Accord Touring. I'm gonna to be taking a look at the driver's information and the infotainment screens. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna give you a general overview. I'll show you how to access the information and then I'll take a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Luther Mankato Honda in Mankato, Minnesota. On the driver's information screen, uh, you've got about the, the, the left half of it is digital, okay? And then the other half is uh, what looks like to be electrochromatic. So when you shut the car off, you really can't hardly see the speedometer, but it, it is there. Um, now, over on the left again, it's all digital, and that's the information that you can manipulate. Over on the far left, you've got an engine temperature gauge, and you, on the far right, you've got a fuel gauge. And then in the middle, you've got some uh, information like your digital sp uh, speedometer and your gear selector, outside temp, and your odometer, which currently is in kilometers, and we're going to show you how to change that. Okay, to, to change the information on the driver's information screen, you're going to use the home button here on the left side, the, the uh, scroll button right here, and the back button. So if I go here and I press the home key, you're gonna get all of these things. And I'll just gonna quickly go through them here. And that's the end of the list. Back to tachometer again, right? Then to access them, you're gonna click on this wheel. And now we're in the tachometer and it says, press and hold to change speed and distance units. So I'm gonna press and hold it. And now it just changed back to miles. So I didn't actually have to go left or right. I just had to wait a second and it changed itself. All right, I'm gonna press the home button again. Okay, I'm gonna to go to range and fuel. So if I click here, now instead of having a tack, I've got range and fuel. You get a nice little graph there. Do you notice it says trip, or it says B between the blue arrows at the, on the left? If I rotate it up, I get trip A. To reset it, you're just gonna click and hold, and then it's gonna reset. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home button to bring up my menu. I'm gonna go down to speed and time. Click the button. And again, this will give you uh, average speed and elapsed time and how many miles you've gone for trip A or trip B, and you just rotate this to, to, uh, to see that. Press home again. Audio, click here. Here's your audio. Now, to change sources, you're gonna go up and down. So here I go, I got FM, AM, Sirius XM, USB. Of course, audio, of course, if I had uh, my phone connected, that would show up there. So I can select any one of these and just click on them, okay? And now, Oops, sorry. Now, if I want to change the channel, I can use the right button, and it goes to the presets. All right? Hit the home button again. Go down to phone. Now, I don't have my phone connected currently, but if I did, that's where my information would show up. So I'm going to press home. I'm going to go down to navigation. Right now, it just shows the cup. If I rotate that dial, I can click, I can select go home, recent destination, calculation mode, saved places, stop, save location. So if I uh, want to, if I'm someplace I want to save a location, I can just click here. I want to stop the navigation, I can click here. And then your turn by turn directions will show up in here as well, okay? But just a quick menu that you can access right through the steering wheel. I'm gonna press the home button again. Go down a traffic sign. Click this button. This is traffic sign recognition. Okay. I'm going to uh, click the home button and then I'm going to go down driving support. All right, this is like your um, lane keeping assist, your uh, dynamic cruise control. If I turn those buttons on, you can see uh, them appearing in there. All right, um, let's see. Let's press home again and driver attention, okay, that will remind you to take a break if it sends you're weaving in and out of the road and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna press home, go down again, rear seat belts. This is giving me a graph of who's buckled in the car. So this is the this is the, uh, the, the back row right there, and it's showing that nobody is currently buckled, which is okay, because we're at a standstill. 
okay? Now I just hit the back button there. I could also just hit the home button. Maintenance. So uh, this is oil life. And if I want to reset it, I can click this button here. I'm not going to do that, but you that's where you would do it. And safety and support. All right, so now I can scroll down and I can see, for instance, my uh, road departure mitigation is on. My uh, blind spot info is on, and it's, you got a nice little graphic there showing you what it's looking at. And then, of course, you've got your low speed braking control on. I've got uh, collision uh, mitigation braking system, and then I can exit. Now, on any one of these, let's go to the top one link, uh, our uh, road departure mitigation. If I click on it, it turns it off. Click on it again, turns it on. Okay, very simple. All right, I'm going to hit the home button, and I'm going to go down to warnings. Click on it. Fasten seatbelt. All right, so not a lot. Uh, anything will show up in there uh, if there's a warning. In this case, there is none. It's just the fasten seatbelt one. But, all right, and then if I scroll one more, then I am back to the tachometer where we were at the beginning. Now, if I leave it alone for a while, this press and hold part is going to disappear and you just have the tack. Okay, that's it for the driver's information screen. Next, we move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so the infotainment screen itself uh, it's an 8 inch screen and it has a 10 speaker including subwoofer uh, speaker system and it is 450 watts. It features uh, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Bluetooth, AM and FM radio, HD radio, Sirius XM. Of course you can uh, establish a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot if you want um, and because it's a newer system it has physical buttons back again. For a while, Honda had just touch buttons on the side, and I really like the fact that they brought those back. Okay, so uh, on the left here, you've got a home button that brings you basically to this screen, okay? You've got a back, a physical back button. You've got a screen brightness or dimness selector right here. And then you've got uh, skip forward, skip backwards. You have a push for power, rotate for volume. Up here, you've got a direct map shortcut. You've got a phone shortcut. You've got an audio shortcut and a source. And then you can tune or scroll with this one. All right. So. At the top of the screen, you have got some shortcuts that show up. For instance, here is, it's uh, uh, phone and navigation and then FM. Up here is just displaying the current media that's playing and then your um, signal and then your clock. You do have two screens of apps, okay? I can go over here and see the second screen or I can click on here and I can just see all the apps. All right, so that's the screen. Uh, it, it works just like your phone. You click on it and it goes into a menu. All right, so let's take a look at these. So for instance, if I click on navigation, the question is, how do I program a route? Well, honestly, the easiest way to perform or to do a set a route is to use voice command. That button's on your steering wheel. And you just push it once and let it go. And let's give it a try. Navigation. Say a navigation command. Find place. Say a place. McDonald's. Searching for McDonald's. Select an item. One. McDonald's, would you like to start navigation? Go. Please drive to highlighted route. Okay, so in every car, in every navigation system, it, it will uh, help you if you, when you press the voice command button, if you look at what it tells you to say and how, it, how to ask it, because each one kind of has their own specific language. So for this one, we had to use the specific terms the, the unit was looking for, but then it found it right away. What I like is they put the cancel button right in the screen. So, boom, there we go. Now, 
If you want to physically type something in, fine. You can click there, and then you get some search tools. You can click Go Home because you can program that in. You can click here. You can type in an address. That's a really slow way. Voice command is so much faster. I'm going to click this back button a minute. I'm going to click it one more time. Okay, um, and you can look at recents, you can look at my trends, where I've been, my trips, and then you can actually look under categories for restaurants, shopping, everyday life, and so on. In case you don't have a specific place you want to eat at, you want to see what's available locally. There are more options down here if you uh, click the button. Okay. Now, you can also increase and decrease the, the uh, zoom of the screen with these buttons here. And it shows you your elevation and your direction. And then if you click the three dots, you can uh, quickly go to a detour. You can look at exit services, which if you've never used those before, here's kind of what they are. You're traveling along a, a place you're not familiar with. Right, you want to see, hey, what's an exit, you know, the upcoming exit? You can click this, okay, and then it will tell you what's available at that exit. Food, gas, whatever. And then typically, you can click on it and it adds a point to your navigation route and takes you right to it. So that's a really handy feature. All right, so that's how to open navigation. That's how to uh, plot a route with using voice command, or if you want to type one in, or if you want to search by a certain type, like a type just restaurants in general. And then there's what the buttons do. Okay, uh, let's go over to phone because I'm gonna hook up my phone. So first thing to do is make sure I'm on this screen, make sure my phone is on. Make sure I'm under settings and Bluetooth. All right, and I kind of scroll to the bottom of my Bluetooth screen and I'm gonna hit connect phone, connect new device. All right, and I'm searching for hands-free link. I found that on my phone, I click on it. Uh, is this code the same on the phone and the screen? Yep, I'm gonna hit pair here. It's, and then it says, do I want to uh, allow contacts and favorites? I'm going to say no, but if your phone, you want to do that, because that's all your phone numbers and contacts and everything. Okay, it's connecting, so let's wait until we get a successful OK play. Now, I want audio and phone, but I can also choose just Apple CarPlay. Uh, and I'm going to choose Apple CarPlay because that's what I prefer to use, but you, this would all just be Bluetooth functions. So I'm going to hit connect here. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm enabling, yep. And there we go. Oops, I got to finish setting up CarPlay here. Use CarPlay on my phone. I had to click on it and we should all be set. So I should be able to take my phone, set it on the nice wireless charger that's in the car, and here we go. So this is Apple CarPlay. Basically, you're seeing your phone screen up on your infotainment screen and any app that's compatible with the car's system. What's nice about this, I just showed you navigation, right? But most of us are used to using uh, an app. So Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze. Well, look at that. I've got Apple Maps there, Google Maps there, and I've got Waze right here. I've also got Pandora. I've got SiriusXM. I've got uh, audiobooks, Amazon Music. So I can use all those right on my screen. All right? which I think is really cool. So even if you got a car without navigation, you could use it. This one happens to have it, but you'd have your choice. Now, you notice a minute ago, I kind of went to a split screen and I can do that by touching this button right here, or I can just swipe to this direction. Now I get a navigation, I get a go home button for navigation. I get a play button for my media and then calendar. All right, you get shortcuts right here, okay, Pandora, Maps, phone, you can look at favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and then voicemail. But every time you use your phone, even playing music through it, it's going to come through the Apple CarPlay. So in Apple CarPlay, you can do messages. And 
you know, this is your most recently used stuff. So if message is sitting there, you'll get an automatic uh, little red dot. Otherwise, you can see it in the screen. So if I click on it there, I can click on it here. And I- Robert Edwards said I'm loving the new Honda Accord. Would you like to reply? Yes. What do you want to say? I love it as well. Your reply to Robert Edwards says I love it as well. Sent. Ready to send it? Yes. Yes. Okay, it's sent. And it's that easy. So that is, I mean, that's just a really, really cool feature again of Apple CarPlay. All right, let's go home. Now, if I click on phone now, it's still gonna just give me this screen. It wants me to go to Apple CarPlay, okay? Now, Apple CarPlay is right here. So you just have to remember that the phone button is, you just need to go to Apple CarPlay. All right, let's talk about the audio. So here I've got FM, and the way it works is the station plane displays up here. You can go to sound here and do bass and treble and adjust this either by sliding or clicking the buttons. Um, I can go down here. I got the subwoofer down here. Okay, that's it. I can hit save when I'm done. I can look at, uh, and these all work the same, but here's your balance and fade. You can uh, scroll with your finger or use the arrows. Uh, you can have the uh, DTS uh, neural sound on or off. And then you can have speed volume compensation adjusted right there. Okay, so let's go back uh, here. Um, settings. So for HD radio, you can automatically choose a digital or analog channel to li uh, or listen to analog only. So auto or analog only. If you don't know the difference between HD radio and analog radio, basically HD radio gives you a much better signal so you get a better sound. It's all encoded in, in numbers like ones and zeros. And uh, they're able to send you multiple streams of the same thing. So the audio quality is better. You also tend to not drop stations as often. Right? So it's like digital radio. Artwork. Do you want to display the artwork if it's available when you're listening to a radio station or not? You can have that on or off there. Hit back again. All right, let's talk about how to tune. Well, Honda makes it really easy. You go to tune here, you can type in the number or you can scroll like this, okay? You can also use this dial. And when you're done, just hit enter. And there it is, a non-existent station. You can do seek, okay, forward or backwards. You can do scan. The difference between seek and scan is if I press seek, it goes to one, the next set of numbers and stops. So if you press scan, um, scan is gonna look for any radio stations in your area that you would have a good connection to. And you can stop it right there. You can also look at a station list and select that way and just scroll through them and click on the one that you want or use the arrows. You can also hit refresh there. All right, how do you save a favorite? Well, you press and hold. So I'm at 91.5, so I'm gonna press and hold. Now it's 91.5. I wanna see more, I got two dots up here. That means I got one more screen of favorites, okay? So let's say I wanna to go to another station here. I'm gonna press and hold. Do you notice it gives me a next, not another one, so it's kind of automatically adding them as I go. It's going to work the same for Sirius XM and for AM radio. To change sources, go up to this little icon, whatever it is, FM, AM, Sirius XM. Click on that, and it brings up your sources. So I'll show you Sirius XM. You can see it's laid out almost exactly the same way. Settings and sound. You can, of course, change channels because you don't have stations. Um, you can pause something. You can look at a channel list. You can press and hold to save favorites. If you have more presets, you can scroll through them. And you can click on the More button. You can scan, look at a um, channel, a channel schedule, and a category list which is very common for um, SiriusXM. Okay, we'll hit back button twice. I'm gonna show you one more here, and we're gonna go to AM. 
And you see it's all the same setup. So I really like it in modern infotainment systems that AM, FM, and Sirius XM basically have all the same buttons, just a little bit different look and a few extra features depending on which one you're using. All right, well, let's go to home. So let's go, we're not gonna, we're gonna skip Bluetooth audio because I'm hooked through Apple CarPlay and I already showed you that. That's Apple CarPlay. Let's take a look at the trip computer. So here I've got current drive. So it shows me range and average uh, fuel economy. If I go to trip A, it'll show me, uh, it's giving me um, one, two, three, four different readings. So this is history and this is the current one. Or I can look at trip B. In this case, they're the same because no one is a new car. Or you can have just current drive. Now, if I click on settings, I can, uh, trip A, I can reset the timing and I can say, I want it reset every time I, I fully refuel. Or I want to manually reset. Or I want to you reset it every time the ignition turns off. Okay, so if you turn it to manual reset, we'll hit save, okay? You can do the same thing for trip B, and then I can delete trip A or trip B history if I wanna delete it completely. So I'm gonna delete trip A. And now if I go back, Right here, what it's done is is it's deleted the last one. You notice on trip B, it still has this one that trip A used to have. So when I hit erase, it erased the last one. So this is the current one. So just so it keeps one of them in, but it erases the everything else. So you, like your last one. All right, let's go back. And let's go to, uh, we already talked about messages. So we're gonna go back over here. We talked about Sirius XM. This would be if you had a USB plugged in down below the infotainment system and you were using that to, to play music. And AM, um, your AT&T hotspot. This is your, your clock here. So you, it, when you do this, you kind of get a nice screen if you want something a little different. And you can go to settings and you can change the day and time from here. And uh, all of these are just, you just click on them and select which one you want. Hit the back button, and you can go through all of these and, and do that. Um, you can change the clock faces. So you have lots of different things. If I do they, I'll, I can preview it. And then if I like it, I can just say, okay. I say set. And now, if I go back, I have that picture. Maybe you want that just kind of like they sometimes they call this a calm screen, uh, but it's it that's where you would find it. So I'm gonna hit back again, and again that was under clock. Now you got a Honda Lake button, and you got system updates here. If I click on that one, you can do it wireless or via USB. So you'd have to go click click on either one, and then under settings. You want for auto download, you'd have to add a connection. You can allow the Honda Link network to work, okay? And you can allow these to work as well. Let's go backwards. You can see the version status, and then you can look at the connection setup. Right now, it would be going through my phone. All right, hit back twice. Hit back twice. Um, let's go back again. And then. Let's go back over here and let's look at settings. So under here, you've got lots of things. Smartphone connection. So you can look at either one of these. For instance, I'm on Apple CarPlay, so connect a new device. And if I wanna look at my phone specifically, if I click on there, I can disconnect it, but I can also delete it. Okay, so if you're selling your car, you wanna delete that out so no one else has that information. Go back twice. Okay, be the same thing for Android Auto. So I'm gonna go back again. Connections. Well, what's connected via Wi-Fi? Okay, my phone. What's connected via Bluetooth? My phone is there too. Although you see that it's running through Apple CarPlay. Okay, and uh, and and the car is getting Wi-Fi signal from my phone, so that's why it showed up there. Display. Okay. Change the brightness, change the contrast, change the black level. And again, you can just take these and, and move them or use 
the buttons. Hit save when you're done. You have a day mode and you have a night mode. And this does the same thing, so kind of redundant. Sound we've seen already before, but that's another shortcut to that. Vehicle. All right, tire pressure monitoring system calibration. So I could, if I thought, you know, my, I think my tire pressure system is off, you can calibrate it there. Or you put new tires on or something, you know, you just, you can re hit calibrate there, which is nice. Driver assist setup. So there's a lot of your safety systems in here. And pretty much, again, this is a one-time setting, but if I go in here, I can have an audible and visual alert or just a visual alert. Now all you do is click and then click save and it tells you what it's doing. This is the audible alert. Okay, if I go into heads up warning, that is uh, on your heads up display, which this model has, it'll flash a warning light, like an alert. You can have that on or off. And again, click save when you're done. And all of these work pretty much the same way. So I'm gonna go through them quick, but I'm not gonna sh you know, turn everything on or off. So the size of the uh, icon, traffic icons on the display and the heads up display. Um, forward collision warning distance, normal or short? Do you wanna notice like right before you crash? or a little bit before you're about to crash. Maybe give you some more time to deal with it. That's where you set that. And we're gonna go down to meter setup. So I, I'll just outside temperature display, I like this. If you feel it is just always too hot outside, well, you can say, I want this to read five degrees below what it really is. So now instead of being 68, it's 63. I, I honestly don't know why, other than a joke, you'd ever use that, but you could always reset it to the normal, which is zero. Configuration of instrument paddle, right? So you want here, we can say, what do I want to show up? You remember when we did the driver's information screen? And we had tachometer, range and fuel, phone, um, audio, navigation. I would simply leave all of these check marked because if you uncheck it, that item won't show up in your driver's information screen, okay? Now, you could set up three different configurations. So another driver could step in and say, well, I don't want all that stuff, here's what I want. They can make that configuration two or configuration three. So up to three drivers can configure that. Okay, I'm going to go back again. Driving position set up. So this one will adjust according to your key fob. So you can sit there and you can adjust your seat and when you get in with your key or your the other person that drives this car gets in with that, it'll automatically adjust for you. Here you have easy entry, exit. If you turn this on, when you, open, when you shut off the car and open the door, the seat will slide all the way back. And when you get in and close the door and start the car up, the seat will slide back. So that's a, that's a nice feature. I would I would turn that on. Let's hit back again. You can set the auto light sensitivity. Um, because this has auto headlamps, eventually in the evening when it turns dark, the, the lights turn on. However, I think auto manufacturers have discovered that it's nice to let the customer decide when they come on because on my car, I always would like my lights to come on a little earlier than they do. So here you can set that setting, okay? So uh, you can set it to minimum or low and change the sensitivity so they come on a little earlier or a little later. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.